Hello everyone. So, in our lecture today, we are going to discuss very briefly a few results on multivariate statistics, namely the results on Hotling t squared test for testing any hypothesis regarding the population mean. After this, we are going to look at a single sample example and we are going to see how we can conduct the Hotling t squared test for the single sample problem. Next, we are also going to see a two sample problem through an example and we will see how to conduct the Hotling t squared test in such a situation. Also, we are going to discuss the problem when we have more than two populations. Suppose, x 1, x 2, x n are i i d according to a p variate normal distribution with mean vector mu and the dispersion matrix sigma. And here both mu and sigma are unknown further we assume that sigma is a p d matrix. Suppose we have the problem of testing the hypothesis h naught mu equal to mu naught where mu naught is some specified vector versus the alternative mu naught equal to mu naught. The statistic as defined by x bar minus mu transpose s inverse x bar minus mu naught is known as the Hotling t squared test statistic where x bar is the sample mean vector and s is the sample variance covariance matrix based on n observations. Also the statistic n minus p over p t square by n minus 1 is distributed as f with degrees of freedom p n minus p under the null hypothesis h naught. So, for the testing problem h naught versus the alternative h 1, the test rule is that we reject h naught if the statistic f is greater than f p n minus p alpha, where f p n minus p alpha is the upper alphaith quantile of the f distribution with corresponding degrees of freedom. Okay. So, the confidence region is basically given by the acceptance region of the test based on the Hotling t squared test. So, this is the acceptance region and from here we have on inverting the confidence region as mu minus x bar transpose s inverse mu minus x bar less than equal to c square where c square is given as above. So, this is the confidence region of the population mean vector mu. So, next let us consider a single sample problem. Consider that we have a data on length, width and height of turtles. Note that the response variable of interest here is not univariate, but rather it is trivariate. The variables being say x 1 that is the length, x 2 that is the width and x 3 that is the height of turtles. Suppose we are interested in the problem of testing the hypothesis h naught mu 1 mu 2 mu 3 is equal to 149 100 53 against the alternative h 1 that h naught is not true. Here mu 1 mu 2 mu 3 are the corresponding population means of the variables x 1 that is the length x 2 that is the width and x 3 that is the height. So, here we try to carry out the test procedure 
using the hoteling t square test statistic. So, as before, as I mentioned, the statistic t square as given is the hoteling t square test statistic, and we base the test on the statistic n minus p over p t square over n minus 1, which follows an f distribution with degrees of freedom p n minus p under h naught. So, as before, the test rule is that we reject h naught at the 100 alpha percent level of significance, if the test statistic is greater than f p n minus p alpha. So, for the problem of testing, we first need to verify whether the data comes from a trivariate normal population or not. For that, we read the data into an R object say data and we form the corresponding variables x 1, x 2, x 3 that is the length, width and height of turtles. And we also combine these variables in the form of a matrix x. Here the columns of the matrix x are the variables x 1, x 2, x 3 and the rows corresponding to the observations. So, for testing whether the data actually comes from a trivariate normal population, we need the R package m v norm test, which can be installed and loaded into the R environment using the following commands. And the command for testing whether the data comes from a trivariate normal population is m shapiro dot test followed by the r object x. Note that we have something denoted as t in the argument of m shapiro dot test. This is because the r command m shapiro dot test requires that the data be in such a form that the rows denote the variables and the columns denote the observations. That is why we require to transpose our original data x and this is actually given by the R command T x. So, here we have the Shapiro-Wilkes normality test and we see that the p value of the test is 0 0.6462, which is much larger than the nominal significance level 0 0.05 and hence the data supports multivariate normality. So, the data supports that it comes from a multivariate normal distribution. So, let us try to conduct the hoteling t square test from the first principles. For that, we require the sample mean vector and we have applied the R function apply over the matrix x and we have set margin equal to 2 and the function as mean, which means that it will compute the mean of the columns of the matrix x. So, here we have the sample mean vector. We also compute the sample variance covariance matrix and this is how the sample variance covariance matrix looks like. So, next we store in the r object mu as the hypothesized mean vector that is the mean vector specified under the null hypothesis h naught that is 149,153. Also n denotes the number of observation and p denotes the number of variables. So, 
we have from the first principles the Hotelling t square test statistic and we also form the test statistic from the very definition as we saw before. So, the value of the test statistic turns out to be 86.83 approximately. The corresponding cutoff from the f distribution with degrees of freedom p n minus p in our case 3 n minus 3 is approximately 2.975. Thus, we see that the test statistic is larger than the cutoff of the f distribution. Since the value of the test statistic is greater than the cutoff point, we can conclude that H naught is rejected at 5 percent level of significance. Okay. So, alternatively we can also conduct the Hotelling t squared test for the single sample problem using an inbuilt R function. We require the R package I C S N P which can be installed and loaded into the R environment using the following commands. And the R function for the Hotelling t squared test is given by Hotelling's t 2 followed by the matrix of observations. Then we have to specify the hypothesized mean vector as specified by the null hypothesis and test equals within double quotation f implies that the test is based on the statistic f. So, for our given data we use the Hotelling's t 2 command in R and when we print the test we see that the p value corresponding to the test is very small. So, we can conclude that the null hypothesis H naught is rejected in favor of the alternative that the population mean vector mu is not equal to the specified mean vector. Okay. Let us try to find the confidence ellipsoid of mu 1 and mu 2 along with the confidence intervals. The 101 minus alpha percent confidence interval of mu is given by the following formula. So, for mu 1 and mu 2 we use the following formula and this is exactly in parity with the above mentioned formula. Also noting that the estimate of mu 1 that is mu 1 hat is given by the sample mean corresponding to the variable x 1 and sigma 1 hat that is the estimate of sigma sigma corresponding to the variable x 1 is given by the square root of variance of x 1. So, for mu 1 and mu 2 we find the confidence intervals for our given data and this is how the confidence intervals for mu 1 and mu 2 looks like. Noting that C i dot x 1 denotes the confidence interval of mu 1 and C i dot x 2 denotes the confidence interval of mu 2. The confidence ellipsoid is given by the quadratic form as given below that is we solve the quadratic form mu star minus x star bar whole transpose s star inverse mu star minus x bar star less than equal to c star square, where mu star, x bar star and s star are as mentioned. 
So, instead of looking at the expression of the quadratic form, we try to plot the confidence ellipsoid along with the confidence intervals. For this, we use the command ellipse and in the argument of the command ellipse, we specify correlation between the variables x 1 and x 2. Then we also specify as the center of the confidence ellipsoid as the mean corresponding to x 1, x 2 and we plot it in R with the help of the command plot. Also using the command a b line, we plot the confidence intervals of mu 1 and mu 2. So, this is what the confidence intervals and the confidence ellipsoids look like. The red band gives the confidence interval of mu 1 and the blue band gives the confidence interval of mu 2 and the ellipse obviously gives the confidence ellipsoid. Okay, so, this is all about confidence ellipsoid and confidence intervals. We look at a few further testing problems. Consider the following two testing problems. Note from a result that if x be distributed as a p variate normal distribution with mean vector mu and the dispersion matrix sigma, then the random variable y equal to c x, where c is a q cross p ordered matrix of a rank q is distributed as a q variate normal distribution with some mean vector say mu star and dispersion matrix sigma star. Note that for the testing problem 1, we have the matrix C as 1 minus 2 over 3 minus 1 over 3 and the rank of the matrix C is 1. And for the problem 2, we have the matrix C as 1 minus 2 over 3 minus 1 over 3 0 1 minus 1 and the rank of the matrix C is 2. So, for 1 we have that the transformed variable y equals C x is distributed as a univariate normal distribution with mean mu star that is mu 1 minus 2 over 3 mu 2 minus 1 over 3 mu 3 and the variance sigma star square. So, our problem of testing in 1 reduces to basically a univariate test of testing h naught mu star equals 0. So, for this problem of testing, we first get the transform data y and for that we first define in R the matrix C as I mentioned before and we get the transform data by pre multiplying our original data matrix X with the matrix C as mentioned before. So, here is our transform data. So, this is a univariate data and for the problem of testing mu star equal to 0, we adopt the t test and the r command for such a test is t dot test and we give the transform data y and specify the alternative as 2 dot sided. So, here we have the one sample t test. We see that the p value is very small which indicates that the null hypothesis h naught mu star equals 0 is rejected at 5 percent level of significance. Similarly, for 2 we have that the transform variable y equals c x follows 
a bivariate normal distribution with mean vector mu star which is mu 1 minus 2 over 3 mu 2 minus 1 over 3 mu 3 and mu 2 minus mu 3 and the dispersion matrix is sigma star. So, for our problem of testing 2, we have basically the test h naught mu star equals 0. In this problem, we can use the hoteling t square test based on the transformed data y. In the same fashion, we get the transformed data y. For that, we specify the matrix C as mentioned before and we get the transform data y. So, here is the R code for getting the transform data. So, we specify the hypothesized mean as mu naught equals c 0 0 and we use the R function hoteling t square t 2 under the R package i c s and p and we give the transform data y specify the hypothesized mean mu as mu naught and also test as f. So, if we print the test this is how the output of the test looks like and we also see that the p value is very small which indicates that the null hypothesis h naught mu star equals 0 is rejected. Okay. So, that was all about a single sample problem and we look at next a two sample problem. So, here we have an example that a pharmaceutical company has a drug and they want to test for the effectiveness of that drug in reducing the symptoms of some topical disease. So, we have a random sample of 20 people with the disease which was given the drug and we also have a control group of size 18. So, based on this data we wish to determine whether there is any significant difference between the drug and the placebo in reducing the symptoms. So, here is the data and we have two groups, the group corresponding to those who have been given the drug and also the placebo group. Here the response variable of interest is trivariate and the variables are denoted as say fever, pressure and aches and we are given the measurements of these variables in suitable units. So, let us assume here that the vector x be the variable corresponding to the drug group and the population mean is given by mu 1. Similarly, y is the response variable of interest corresponding to the placebo group with the population mean mu 2. So, we are interested in the problem of testing mu 1 equals to mu 2 versus the alternative that mu 1 not equal to mu 2. As before, we have to first test for the multivariate normality of the data. So, as before, we need the R library mv norm test and under this library we use the r command m shapiro dot test followed by the transpose of the data corresponding to the response variable x and also the response variable y separately. So, from the test we see that the data supports multivariate normality and hence the test can be conducted with the help of the hoteling t square test based on 
two sample problem. The R command for the hoteling t squared test for two sample problem is given by the command hotelings t2 as before, but here in the argument we have to specify the two data that is the data corresponding to the group 1 and the data corresponding to the group 2. Here that is the data x and the data y. So, when we print the test we have the following output. We see that here the p value of the test is very small and since it is less than 0 0.05 we may conclude that the null hypothesis H naught mu 1 equals mu 2 is rejected at 5 percent level of significance. So, we see that to perform the two sample hoteling t square test, we can simply use the R command hotelings t 2 and we can easily get the test provided that the data supports multivariate normality. If multivariate normality fails, then the hoteling t square test cannot be conducted. Next, we are going to look at the problem where we have now not two populations, but more than two populations. For this, let us consider the skulls data set from the R library HSAUR and this gives various measurements of the different dimensions of the skulls of Egyptians over the years. So, this is the sample data. The column denoted as epoch are the years and the next four columns are the response variables of interest. So, here the variable of interest say y is the variables as denoted by mb, bh, bl and nh in the given data. And suppose we wish to test the hypothesis whether the measurements of dimensions of skull vary over the years. That is we have here 5 years namely 4000 BC, 3300 BC, 1850 BC, 200 BC and AD 150. Let mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, mu 4, mu 5 be the means corresponding to the different years. Here we have 5 populations namely the 5 different years and we wish to test the hypothesis that the means mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, mu 4 and mu 5 are equal against the alternative that they are not equal. For this, we first read the data in the R environment and we also combine the data that is the response variables in the form of the matrix say denoted by y1. Here as before the response variable is not univariate, but is is of four variables. So, as before first we need to test the multivariate normality of the data and as mentioned we use the R command m shapiro dot test under the R library mv norm test and for our given data that is the data we formed with the help of the matrix y1, we have the p value of the test as 0 
since the p value is greater than 0 0.05, we can conclude that the data actually comes from a multivariate normal distribution. So, for our testing problem of interest in R, we use the command MANOVA and the argument here is given by the matrix Y1 of the variables and this is followed by we mention as dot factor epoch as we are interested in the problem of testing whether the dimensions of various measurements of skull are different over the years that is the 5 years. So, we store this in the R object say MANOVA 1 and we use the summary command over the R object MANOVA 1 to get the test results. Also note that we have mentioned here test equal to pili which means that our test will be given in the form of the pili's trace. So, this is the output of the test and we see that the p value of the corresponding test is very small and thus from here we may conclude that the mean skull measurements over the years are different. We may also conduct various other tests like the Wilkes test, the Roy's union intersection test and the hotelling lolly test and to get these tests we simply specify in the summary command in the argument test and we specify them as either within double quotation Wilkes. This will give the Wilkes test. If we specify within double quotation Roy, we will get the Roy's union intersection test and if we specify hotelling lolly, we will get the hotelling lollies test. So, our natural question here that arises is since the mean skull measurements over the years are different, which variables are significantly different over the years? For this, we use the R command summary.aov over the R object MANOVA1 and we have the following output. So, note that the p value corresponding to the response b h is marginally significant if we consider the level of significance as 0 0.05 and the p value corresponding to the response variable n h is insignificant. So, we may conclude that the response variable as denoted by n h is not significantly different over the years. The response variable b h is marginally significant and the other response variables say m b and b l are significantly different over the years. So, to summarize we see that for the single sample problem we can use either the first principles or several inbuilt R functions to perform the Hotelling T square test for testing any hypothesis regarding the population mean vector. Even for the two sample problem, we can use the first principles or we can use the inbuilt functions under several libraries. And the case where we have more than two populations, we can go for MANOVA using several inbuilt R functions under various R libraries. Thank you.